today's project which is going to be a flannel shirt and it's going to be a standard shirt pattern that you can use actually for men or women so if you want to figure out the pattern so you can make a guy's shirt or something like that go for it it's just the standard non-fitted comfy flannel shirt is what I'm going for and this is the pattern okay try and get you to focus there it is butterick and it is a Palmer plush tissue fitting method, but we're not going to tissue fit method this. There's no reason to. There's no darts. There's nothing like that. It's just, it's just a, a shirt. So I'm going to be making the long sleeve version and I, I'm fighting putting a pocket on it, but I really feel like I should. So I'll probably just put the little, this one with a little standard. Here we go. This one with a little standard pocket on it. And because it's a men or women's shirt, you know, it works for both. So I'm going to actually cut this out for my size, but chances are I'll probably use this pattern to make my husband a shirt because he won't stop begging for another shirt. Oh, and another thing for him, this is like totally TMI and everything, but for him, he um, had a trait because of an issue, so um, collars are uncomfortable. And so for this, you can omit putting the big uh, lapel part of the collar on and just leave the band. That's what's more comfortable for him. And so, you know, that's always an option too. I won't be doing that on this one, but if that's something you want, you can do it here. So let's get started. Oh, the fabric. This is my fabric. It is a cotton flannel. There you go. It's cotton flannel, 100% cotton. I have pre-washed it in hot water, pre-dried it on high heat until it was very, very dry, just trying to get all of the shrink out of it that I can. So um, I'm excited. We're going to go ahead and cut this out. All right, so even though I'm not doing the official tissue fitting method, I am going to work on these sleeves for a moment. And that is because I have laid them next to each other and realized that these two seams where the main part of the sleeve and this sleeve attach is perfectly flat. No curvature at all. If there is no curvature at all in this, then there is no point in having a two-part sleeve. So, to make my life simpler and because I want a shirt that has a one-part sleeve, I'm going to combine them. So, because I know that these are going to be a 5 8 inch seam allowance, Kind of like if this was folded 5 8 and this was folded 5 8 I'd be subtracting out um, one and a quarter because that's 5 8 plus 5 8 So what I am going to do is on one of the pieces, doesn't really matter which one, I'm going to use this one here and a pencil. I'm going to get my ruler and draw a line straight down here at one and a quarter. So I have, I don't know if you can see, I have a pencil line on there, I can see it. Now I'm going to line that up over here so that my pencil line is at the edge of the um, underneath piece. Okay, so that way I'm overlapping by one and a quarter inches the entire way. And now I'm just going to tape it in place. 
because it's um, if if having an extra piece makes it useful for shaping or for a purpose for a design purpose I have no problem with it but I think that what they did here is put it into a two-part sleeve just because they do use a two-part sleeve in their tissue pit tissue fitting method which I am not okay so now that I have my piece together and I am doing the size medium okay and that's one thing before you do this you're going to need to cut um, your bigger piece at the cutting line for your size you're going to do but that's not the final outcome you can always adjust because at this point you have one big sleeve and it's a lot easier in my opinion to measure at this point this whole bicep area and everything to get a better idea if it's going to be fitting you now they do have a size here and it says for size medium this line that goes through this bullseye which is supposed to mark the fattest part um, should be 16 and a half yeah it's actually it's actually good so if you put this together the way I said and by cutting this at your um, size that you're going to be using you should be able to go by this for the measurement but what I would do is then get a measuring tape okay so say the size I'm cutting at is 16 and a half I know that that is bigger than what my arm circumference is but I'm not sure exactly how much bigger how much ease it is I can put my little tape together at that point slide it over my arm and just see put it put this on like a sleeve and see how much you have if you want more now is the time to add more okay but for me this is good the other thing that we have to look at with the sleeve is the length and this does look like a fairly long length just because it's a unisex pattern you know traditionally the men have the longer arms I guess so if I measure from this point here which should be the seam line at the top where the the shirt is sewn in okay so I'm going to be measuring from that circle and know that there is a cuff okay so just to the point if I back it up for a seam allowance say this is 23 inches even taking out seam allowances all right so this is my cuff piece I'm just going to mark a couple things so it's going to be clear this is the side actually I should put it this way this is the side that gets sewn on and this is my bottom it's a cuff where you cut two pieces for each side so there is a seam allowance at the bottom and it looks like they're using a 5 8 inch seam allowance down here too so I'm just going to draw a line down here which is going to mark once the seam allowance is taken out at the bottom where the in, where the finish line will be okay then because I'm going to be sewing it up here I'm going to once again do my one and a quarter inch um, line so I can just see where everything's going to land so I'm going to line up and I'm going to be measuring at this line that comes straight down the middle here so I'm going to line up my one and a quarter inch line at this point where it's overlapping this line for the uh, pattern underneath okay so let me just stick something there so it doesn't float away so now as is just before any changes I can measure the length from the bottom of the cuff which is here to my shoulder line which is here which is 25 and a quarter so my sleeve if I'm going to go for 23 inches is two and a quarter inches too long okay which brings us to this lengthen and shorten here fold all right so at that point actually I'm going to put another piece of tape right over that so it doesn't want to come apart all right so at this point here is where I'm going to fold it 
Now, if you needed to make it longer, say you're making it for a guy who has very, very long arms. Instead of folding it, you just slice it and add in something, okay? So if I need to shorten it two and a quarter inches, if I make a fold one and an eighth, which is half of that, because it's doubled, and when I fold it, I'm gonna get the right amount. So I put my ruler at one and an eighth from the edge. I'm gonna flip this down and make that crease. And before I tape it, I will put my ruler on top just to double check I got it right. And it looks good. So I can go ahead and put a piece of tape across the top here. Now this shirt has the option for one of those little tab things that you can put on there so you can roll it up and button it. I'm not going to do that. I don't want that. Okay, so now the only thing I have left to do, and you see I did not cut the sides off yet, and that's because I knew I was going to be shortening it and I need to make sure I have enough tissue paper to make this work. Okay, so now I can go ahead and trim my sides. So I'm doing the medium size, all right? And I'm going to draw a line from this point up here where my medium corner is to this point down here where my medium line matches up with the bottom. And that's gonna be my new cutting line for my pattern. Okay, and I'm gonna do that on both sides. And now my sleeve pattern is going to fit and I can feel really confident with that. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and cut out my new sleeve pattern based on my line I drew on the outside edge. My cuff is staying the same. I don't need to change the cuff. Alrighty, so the first thing I want to do with my woven fabric that I have pre-washed is to make sure that it is actually cut on the straight. So I just make a little clip and start tearing. If it gets all the way across, we're good. Okay, so you can see on this side of my tear, what is that? About two and a half inches. And on this side, it's about three eighths. So we had a lot of straightening up to do there. So now that I've done that, I can line up that torn edge and line up my corners here where they meet with the selvage. And I can know for sure that uh, when I cut out my fabric, it's going to be on the straight and everything's going to hang the best that it can. Now, one thing is, like I told you, I pre-washed this and pre-dried it. It is 100% cotton, so that means it's it shrunk up a little bit. Just the nature of it. Like, if I stretch, it will have a bit of stretch in it, okay? If I iron this right now, it's going to work that stretch out and my fabric will be larger and smoother and I can cut out my pieces. I don't want to do that because I don't want to iron my finished garment. I want this to be a soft flannel shirt that I can pull out of the dryer and just put on. If I cut it out after I've ironed it and stretched it all out, I can do that, I can make my blouse, but the first time I wash it and pull it out of the dryer, all those pieces are gonna go back to this texture, okay, which is very, very soft. If I cut it out like this, they're already shrunk so that it's going to be more stable and I'm going to have the uh, look that I want and without having to iron it to get it back out to the original fit that I'm cutting it out for. So, all that being said, I will iron it as I'm working on it, but I will not iron it before I cut it out. Now, if you did like I did to my sleeve, none of the pattern cutting layouts are going to work because I have a, a big single piece sleeve now and all of their layouts are for two sleeves. So let me just give you a quick rundown of my theory on laying out patterns. Do the biggest ones first. So like on this piece here, let me see if I can get you to see any better. What I'm doing is I am setting my biggest piece, which first is going to be my sleeve on here. And then I push it over so that I can see if I have any extra, hang on, if I have any extra space. And on this one, 
I have a little bit of space here, which is enough to put my collar band on. So I'm going to place that there, cut close around it, and then go to the next large piece and things like that. So got everything cut out. And the first thing we're going to do to get started sewing is the pocket. These are just basic pockets. I'm not doing the version with the pleat. They are not lined pocket. There is nothing crazy about them, but we will take it step by step. I need to get my hole puncher so I can mark a couple things. Okay, so I started by punching out the holes that mark the fold line for the pocket and just observe that the stitch line angles in here. I'm not actually going to mark those, but you know, we can keep an eye on that. And because I am using a very dark fabric, I am going to use my white chalk pencil to mark today just because it's going to show up, especially for the camera, a lot better than my heat erasable pens will. So um, for this particular fabric, the inside and the outside are the exact same. So I get to just choose which side I want to be the inside and outside. So there is one pocket that is marked. Okay, so I just loosely drew a line there. I'm not actually liking how this is working for drawing lines. Hang on a second. All right. I'm going to try the yellow chalk next time. So I'm going to do one more pocket here. Just marking where the little holes are. And these circles are marking the seam allowance. Okay. So in addition to just being a two points to connect, it's also the seam allowance. Oh, that's much better. Okay. So the first thing I need to do is fold under to, it says to the uh, wrong side, your top edge of your pocket by a quarter inch and press it down. So it'll be like that. I'm going to go over to my ironing board and press these. Okay, so now that I have these pressed, I'm going to fold it so that that exposed pressed edge is looking up at me and I'm folding it on my fold line. Put a little pin on either side. And I'm going to sew right here on each side at a 5 8 inch seam allowance, okay? Once I have those folded, we can flip them. While I'm at the machine, I'm also going to be running a row of stitching um, around the corners and a little beyond, okay? And I'm going to be doing this na more narrow, um, anywhere from 3 8 between 3 8 and a half an inch, I would probably do it closer to 3 8 Alrighty, so let's see this pocket here. I've got this stitched at 5 8 normal stitching, <coughs> excuse me. Down here, the stitching I put around here is a longer stitch, okay? More like a gathering stitch. So I'm just going to come in here, clip out the bulk, and over here the same. Trim that side, clip that at a diagonal. Now I should be able to turn this right side out. And when I press it, that's going to be a nice little top. Actually, let me make sure my corners are poked out here really well with my handy dandy chopstick. Okay, so now this part, once I press it, that's going to look really nice at the top. So now this bottom part, I need to get it also folded in at the same 5 8 seam allowance so that these edges are going to go straight down. So what I'm going to do, just try to keep these threads out of the way because I left long tails there, is uh, pin this fold here, do the same thing over here. At this point, I've got this kind of mess going on here. Um, you could make it a, a sharp corner if you wanted to. It looks like it wants to be more of a rounded corner. So what I'm going to do is pull the bottom thread, throw some gathers in there. Actually, I'm going to move this pin more out to the side here. And try 
to fit my very round those aren't working to fit my very round pocket corner gauge in here now if I put my very round one and bring it in that's more than 5 8 inch so that's not going to work I'm going to try that's a three centimeter round I'm going to try for the two centimeter round see if that works so I lay it so that these two sides line up with it and see what it's like if this that is a lot closer that's a lot closer but it's still more than five eighths of an inch so I am going to do down one more to the 1.5 centimeters and push it out again and that looks a lot better to me so I'm going to go with that I press the top just to hold it in place and I'm actually going to pull my little template out and just press the top parts of these sides oopsie gotta turn that steam off so my camera can keep working so I'm just pressing these upper sides so I can move this pin out of the way here okay and while I'm at it I'm going to go ahead and pull one of these threads on this side over here so that it can be gathering too. Now like you saw we figured out that the 1.5 centimeter curve I think is going to work with this pattern shape. It looks a lot curvier on the um, pattern piece than it does printed for some or folded out right here for some reason. So I'm just kind of getting it so everything is somewhat settled there this is the little clamp that comes with it this whole thing it's made by clover so you can use that to press everything in and hold it so you don't burn your fingers put the tip of your iron here press it really good and then pop this out in your corner should stay like that Okay, so now both of my pockets have their corners pressed in and what I'm supposed to be doing now is basting across here to tack this down and they said baste it along the edge. Um, these stitches are not coming out so these are permanent stitches all right so we don't do a big old wide basting. I'm actually going to just um, use my machine and that's going to make the stitching visible but I have a feeling that there's going to be other top stitching in this uh, shirt project so having a line of stitching visible is not going to be a problem it'll probably blend in with some other top stitching so with that I'm going to run a stitch across that fold line on both of these just to keep that part secure Okay, so the next piece I'm working on is my bodice front piece and I am just clipping my notches and I'm going to punch and mark my circles and the place that I really need to focus on right now, hang on one second here, is going to be the pocket markings because the very first thing we're doing is marking this pocket. So there's two different pocket pocket placement options the uh, one that has flaps and the one with no flaps I am doing no flaps and I am also doing on the straight they have where you can cut the same pocket on a bias or on a straight I cut it on the straight um, I don't have a plaid or anything where it's gonna show that style option so cutting it flat is fine for me so there's two different pocket marks the top one is if you're doing the flap that's where that goes I'm doing the one with no flap so I'm going to cut out these bottom holes here and the corners of my pocket should match up with these okay so I am marking there's a little X here I am marking both of my pocket placement circles and I am marking this up here which is a sleeve easement dot so in addition to all of the the little notches which I just clipped and I will mark both sides okay so here is uh, my two front bodice pieces and I hope you can see my little dart my little dots those dots match up with the top corners of the pocket so I'm just going to kind of lay them right there. Couldn't see it for a second. 
All right, and I'm going to pin them into place with the little heads poking out the side of the pocket. And I want to pin it pretty securely because I'm going to go back and basically top stitch and edge stitch this thing. And I want to make sure that it's not moving while I'm working on it. Okay, so I'm over here at my sewing machine, got my narrow foot on because I can see a lot better with it. And remember there was a diagonal line up here at the top of the pocket. I don't have it drawn in, but I'm just gonna make a little dot about a quarter of an inch in that signifies the top of the diagonal line, okay? So I'm going to start out my stitching where this fold line stitch um, is going to meet up with the outside edge. And I'm just going to do a quick little back stitching here to get it started. And I'm going to aim to the top to this dot. Doesn't have to be exact. Okay. Now I'm going to turn with my needle down, turn the whole thing, come out towards the edge a couple stitches. Actually, I think I went a little too far. Okay. Needle down, turn the whole thing again, drop it, and then I can go ahead and proceed down. I'm going to go ahead and click this thread so it doesn't tangle me up. And with my narrow foot, I can just run the edge of my foot along the edge of my pocket piece and it's going to give me a pretty good gauge of a sixteenth of an inch. It actually might have been easier if I would started with the other side of the pocket and worked that way but you know. Coming up the edge of the pocket here I just get to go all the way up to the top Okay, Oops, I think I overshot it, so I'm going to back up a stitch, turn it towards my little dot that I drew for my diagonal point, turn it again, and come back down to this point here. And there you go. Okay, so the next piece I'm working on is my back piece. And I've clipped all my notches. I'm also going to make a little clip over here, which is the center back. And there are dots here, but I'm actually going to go ahead and make a little clip there because this is going to be a pleat that's going to move in. And I know by looking at it that it's a uniform thickness the whole way. So if I pull this back, I can see that my dart line here is one inch from the edge. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a little line, you know, not an exact length, but just, you know, a couple inches. So one inch in from that center back. This piece is cut on a fold. So that's nice. This is going to be that little back pleat that adds extra ease of movement in that back piece. So opening this back piece up then I can go ahead and draw the official line in the middle where that little clip is. And what we want to do with the dart, ah, here we are, on the pattern piece you can see it is move the outside darts to the inside. Sometimes they're the opposite way. On this one, they want it more like a box plate, so that's fine. So I'm going to move these outside lines and fold them and bring them to the inside. So same thing here, pinching this line and bringing it over to match up in that center line. And just going to put another pin holding it upright here. And I'm going to go ahead and press this little pleat really quick just to hold it in place. Okay, now that it is lightly pressed, I am actually going to come across here with a needle and thread and just baste these together so I can remove these pins. And I'm doing this up in the seam allowance area where they're going to be invisible. I'm going to be leaving these basting stitches in, so I'm trying to use a thread that is somewhat similar. It's not a perfect match, but it's close. 
So now I've got that stitched across there. I feel very secure and I'm going to go grab my yoke pieces. So I am clipping a little bit at my center back of my yoke along with clipping the notches. And there are a few different circles to mark um, down here, sorry, down here, up here, and there's a triangle over here that matches the top shoulder placement. So, and I also am doing a little clip at the center back up here at the, uh, where the collar band is going to be sewn on. Now up here at the top of the yoke, there's a triangle connected to a circle with a line that says the normal shoulder line. On just one of these yoke pieces, I am actually going to trace that out because that's going to help me while I'm putting it on my dress form and things just to make sure it's hanging right. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and sew my yoke on here and I just wanted to show you this is actually more of what a standard shirt looks like on this side of it. So, in my opinion, this is a style option. This is how the pattern has it shown, so it's more of a box pleat. But if this looks better to you and you're more comfortable to it, put this side up, you know. It's all your choice. What I'm going to do now is take the yoke piece that I have all marked up, and I'm going to be matching it up the uh, centers to my center because that is very obvious. There are notches and all the way to the edge. Instead of stitching it at 5 8 I'm going to come back and hand baste this. Just, you know, a really quick hand basting, um, probably closer to a 3 8 inch seam allowance just so it'll be out of the way when I'm actually stitching it by machine. Okay, so this side, I have it just basted on. Here's my yoke. I'm going to flip it over and put it face down here and I'm going to pin the other side of the yoke on here again matching the centers and the notches in the ends and pinning it along the top. So now that this is all pinned I'm going to come back and stitch it across here all of all three layers at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Okay so now that I have this sewn um, these two edges of the yoke go up and it encases that seam. Okay, it's a very thick and chunky seam. I don't know if you can see there's quite a drop off here. So of course that means I am going to grade these. So here's the thing, I am usually pretty arbitrary about which seams I am clipping when I'm grading. There is actually some kind of a method to this, but in general I usually just clip that which is the um, Hang on a second. The one that's the fattest is usually the one that I grab. But since all three of these layers are the same, I am actually going to use the traditional decision factor of which one gets cut what. So what you need to look at is what is the outside? What's the visible side? And the visible side is this, okay? So if you have these three layers. The one that is closest to the visible side is this one and that is the one I'm going to leave the longest because it's going to act like a buffer, like a facing for what I do in here. And since this is the longest, then the one next to it will be the next shortest and the one farthest from it will be the shortest. So what I like to do is start my trimming with the shortest one. It's going to be this one here, and I'm going to cut this layer to about a quarter of an inch all the way across. Okay, so now that, say, say I've finished cutting it across, just, you know. The second layer I'm going to cut halfway between the original size and the one just before it. And of course I could be more precise with these, um, but I'm just kind of freestyling here so that by the time I'm done, I'm left with these three graduated layers. So that then when I open it up, okay, and oops, this is the right side over here, okay, I don't see any of that bump right here. You know, the, the bump that you see up here, let's see if I can press it more so you can see it. That bump that's there, 
it's just disappeared okay so that's how I'm going to uh, grade it all the way across here okay so now that I have it graded the whole way across I'm going to go ahead and open up these yoke pieces again and give this part right here a really nice press Alrighty, so here is my back and I have it the right side up here and I'm going to take this underside of the yoke and just kind of flop it down so it's out of the way for right now. And I'm taking my front pieces, matching up my notches and you know all the usual things and sewing across here at 5 8 inch on both of the shoulders. Alrighty, so right now I have this front seam sewn and I've pressed the seam allowances towards the yoke. So let me raise you up here so you can get a better look. And you can see, as soon as you iron flannel, you can see exactly where I put that iron. It's not burnt, it's just flannel. So if that really, if this, you ever deal with flannel and that bothers you, usually what you can do is just brush the nap out and it'll get those marks off. Um, I'm gonna be pressing this so many times before I'm done that I'm not really stressed about that. But if it does, there's your option. So what I'm gonna be doing is bringing this other part of the yoke over it, tucking it under, and um, then slip stitching it along here nice and invisibly but so that I can get it graded just like on the back okay I'm going to actually make a couple trims right now so just like on the back this is the layer here that I left full size okay the middle layer here I'm going to go ahead and cut it you know about a fat eighth of an inch off as long as they end at different spots, you'll be fine. So then this part here is gonna be the shortest one. So I'm actually going to be cutting it too, but so that I can make sure that I do it somewhat, somewhat evenly, I'm actually gonna draw myself a little line at a quarter inch, because it seemed like that's what I was cutting off before. And I'm just gonna trim that off. And that should, you know, if everything is right in the universe, that should make it so it lines up so that everything will be graded nicely. Now, I ironed this part, you know, flannel moves, things like that, so it might not be perfect, but it'll be a close, you know. Aim for perfection, you'll get halfway there. So, I'm gonna go ahead and make those trims on the opposite side and then we'll pin down the yoke. So now that I have, now that I have it slightly trimmed in here, you know, different layers, different levels, I'm going to do my best to smooth it nicely and carefully fold my edge under. It should not be much of a fold because we did trim quite a bit off so that it just barely covers that stitching line and then pin it on and then come back with my needle in a hopefully matching ish thread and whip stitch across here trying to make sure that none of my stitches appear on the right side this is the wrong side that I'm working on here so I am trying to catch the bottom layer right where those stitches are so that I can kind of be in the stitches and in the seam allowance and then come back up and just catch the very edge of the fabric and so that way nothing shows from the right side and honestly not very much shows from the wrong side either but I'm trying to make sure that I cover those stitches because they are going to want me to come back and top stitch on the other side so if I have it on this side where the stitches are definitely covered, I should be safe when I go to top stitch to make sure that everything's going to line up okay. Okay, so now I have it whip stitched down here on the bottom. And this is my right side and I'm going to come back and edge stitch it. Um, so basically, to me that means making a line of stitching about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch in 
on the yoke side of this seam just nice and straight okay so I have it stitched up here you can see it's just you know going along the edge and actually underneath it didn't quite line up perfectly you know it's close but it's not perfectly but because I whip stitched it I really don't have to worry about it coming undone or anything and it's close enough for me so I wanted to point one thing out though it does not mention anything in the instructions about preserving this neckline now I am using a very stable flannel I'm not worried about this but if I was using any kind of fabric that might not be as stable as this I would be doing something to preserve this either using stay tape on the individual pieces uh, stay stitching it or something just to keep this from stretching out of shape while we're doing all of these crazy things with the yokes and everything so just thought I would throw that in there the last thing I'm going to do with this piece before we go on to sleeves is just sew up the side seams all right and just because I am in the mood and really no other reason than that I'm going to be doing a different type of seam here I am going to be doing a machine flat felled seam because it gives a really nice clean shirt type of finish and I just I just feel like doing it that's all there is now if you're doing a really fancy sheer fabric or something it's also very lovely for that it's very nice for making sure things that want to shed and ravel and things like this like this flannel is obviously showing us it can do it's good for that too so the very first step is to go ahead and sew my seam like normal at 5 8 all the way down okay so I'm gonna want my felling to go towards the back all right so this is a front piece here okay this is my pocket and this is my back piece this is an armhole up here so I'm going to trim the seam allowance on the side that I want my felling to go to all right so this is the back this is the back seam allowance and I'm going to cut it in half to about a quarter inch and the same thing with the other side except obviously the other side will be the back so both will be going towards the back all right so I've got them both trimmed so on this side my short side is on the back side this way and on this side where are you it's the opposite so both of them are short towards the back okay we got that now so what I need to do now is go to my ironing board and press the whole seam allowance towards the back nice and flat okay so now that it's pressed flat this way what I'm going to do is take my longer side and kind of wrap it around the shorter one and press it back down and just pin it in place like this okay and it actually goes pretty easily especially on the flannel just down the edge now um, you could probably just stitch it this way if your fabric is at all unstable you would need to hand baste it first all right this is a very stable fabric so I actually feel pretty confident about it so I'm going to go ahead and stitch it just using pins but you know basting is always a good idea if you're at the least bit uncertain about how your fabric is going to react now I'm going to come back and edge stitch it on this side the side that I just turned under um, about the same as I did on this front right here on the yoke which is oh it's probably close to a sixteenth of an inch between that and an eighth and I have a special foot that makes it easier for when you're doing an edge stitch on something that is multi-layered like up here I've got a few folds so it's higher and down here it's lower and so I'll show you that foot and um, you don't need it you can use other feet you can use a standard foot you can use a narrow foot you know use what you have but I just collect feet you know some people collect jewelry some people collect stamps I collect sewing machine feet so let me show it to you 
So I think I've shown this before. Um, you can see here it's marked 1 16th. So that's the edge, that's the uh, allowance that it's going to give you is a 1 16th inch edge. And they make them for different sizes. On the top, it's for a straight stitch. And it has this little blade thing. It's on a spring. It just kind of goes up and down. But that goes right against where that edge is going to be. So I'll pop it on my machine and show you how it works. So I'll take it slow because, you know, I want to make sure it doesn't come untucked here. And I just have, oops, got a little zigzaggy there, but it's in the seam allowance, so we're okay. So I am just running it, the edge here, this is where my little blade is, just up against my folded edge. And like right here, it wanted to come untucked. So I can just take a second, make sure that it's going to stay nice and neat. And continue down my way. Okay, so this is what it looks like on the inside. And it's nice and clean and very secure. You know, looks fine. On the outside, on the visual side, it looks even better. It just looks like an extra row of stitching. I really, really like the way that this works. It's very easy to do on um, seams that are straight. It's a little bit harder on curves, but you know, it's possible. But um, I just thought that it would be nice since everything else is nice and secured, since the yoke edges are tucked in and everything's tucked in, it just seems like doing uh, machine felling, it kind of carries on the whole theme of the construction of the jacket. So starting on the sleeves now, so I've only have one sleeve here my other one I have set aside just to mark one at a time and I've already actually clipped the notches while they are both together and I'm going to up here at the very top put a little clip where that top is in addition to that little clip though I will be marking I should have pinned this on here before I turn on the camera but I will be marking these sleeve placement dots also. And they are just kind of directing us to where most of the ease needs to go. Usually the bulk of the ease needs to go between these dots up here, okay? Then down below where we've done a few things here, there is a vent opening, but it's not really marked on here because when this was a two-piece sleeve, it was right where that seam was, all right? But there is a circle up here that marks the top of that vent opening. So I'm going to put a little dot up there, and then these are my pleats, and so I'm going to mark these dots also with my chalk pencil. Now when I move this aside, I'm going to draw lines connecting these pleats because that's how I like to do it. The chalk will brush off. All right, now I'm laying my ruler next to this dot and lining up this pleat line on a, a guideline here so I know that everything is going nice and flat. And I'm doing this backwards and it's awkward. And I'm going to draw a line where that slice is going to be for my vent here. Now, there's a couple things I can do for this vent. I can just roll it in. I can make a continuous lap. You know, when we get to that stage, I will show you. But the first thing actually I need to do is cut into it up to this dot. Okay? Then I need to take this outside pleat line, pinch it, and bring it over and match it up to the pleat line that is next to my vent. And I'm just going to pin that like this. And I'm going to do the exact same thing over here with the one that I already marked so that they are going in opposite directions. So on this one it's vent then pleat. On this one it'll be pleat then vent. So just to hold these pleats together, I am actually going to baste them up a couple inches just to hold it nice and secure 
come on, while I'm working on everything else. And that way I don't have to worry about pens in here while I've got everything else going on. This yellow, it is chalk, it will come off. And if it doesn't brush off, I can hit it with a damp cloth. And if that still doesn't work, I know that I know that next time I wash it, it will come off. So I'm not too worried about that. Okay, so now I wanna handle this vent opening really quickly. So there's a couple different things you can do. You can just um, roll it in like that and just have the fold kind of taper off to nothing at the tip and stitch that. You can do that and that's kind of similar to what it says in the instructions. I am going to do something slightly different, of course. I am going to make a little continuous lap piece, which is not difficult at all. It's basically just a little strip of fabric that's going to encase that whole thing. So that vent opening is about four inches tall. So I want to make sure that my strip is longer than that. And um, I'm going to cut my strip. Oh, how wide am I going to cut my strip? I'm going to cut my strip an inch and a half wide to start with because I can trim it down easily. But if I cut it very narrow, see, see, I'm shutting. But if I cut it very narrow, sometimes it can be hard to add the width that you need. So, all right, so this is my inch and a half line here. And I've got it doubled, so I'm gonna have two strips. And this strip is longer than my lap doubled, so I can just trim off the extra, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is look at it from the right side. All right, this is my right side here. And I'm gonna take my split and open it up so it's flat all the way across, okay? And because I know my strip is a little bit longer, I'm gonna let it overhang the edge just a bit. And pin it down. Okay, so I hope you can see that. This is my sleeve piece. This is my continuous lap piece, that little strip. And I'm gonna, at the point, at the very point at the top, it is up maybe, it's less than a quarter, more than an eighth, okay? And I'm just gonna put a couple pins here because I like pins. I watch people sew who do not use pins and it stresses me out, so. Okay, so then on this side, again, I am stretching it down, not like pulling stretching, but you know, guiding it, stretching it down so that the very end of this is back in line with my strip of fabric. So now I'm gonna go sew this thing. And where I'm gonna sew it is about a quarter inch seam allowance, okay? So I'm gonna do it with this side up so I can see where all this stuff is here. So when I'm sewing it at a quarter inch and I'm here and I'm getting closer and closer, when I get to this point, I'm gonna make sure that I move all this stuff over and then lift up my presser foot with my needle down, shift all this fold and then continue the rest of the way. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Okay, so I have this stitched and that quarter inch seam allowance is according to the edge of the strip that I cut, not according to the angled one, according to the straight one. So when I open it up, this is the right side, okay? When I open it up, I don't have all those puckers here, all right? Basically, you wrap it around your seam allowances and tuck it in, and then it looks like this, all right? All right, so now I am showing you how I am folding the edge and tucking it in so that I can pin it and then whip stitch it right at that peak where everything comes together at the very top. And I put it just beyond the stitching line so that when I sew down that peak, those stitches that I'm going to put in, which are going to be hand stitches, will help secure it. 
and I'm just showing you here where I am continuing to pin it so everything is going to be nice and flat and ready to hand stitch. Now, what I'm going to show you now is the other sleeve, which I have already done this whole process to, and I have it clipped together. So when I open it up, you can see that it has been stitched by hand, just little invisible stitches, as I showed you before, and I pressed it already. I just realized that my microphone had been on mute for a while, so you just witnessed some voiceover stuff. And um, I went ahead and deleted something, but what I want to show you is what I have done to finish off this edge. Okay, so first of all, this is my edge that I sewed, I have whip stitched it, I pressed it, okay? And we know that the side that has the pleat is the side that has the buttonhole, which means that's the upper piece. The upper piece, I'm folding this little part that we just encased under, okay? The part that will have the button on it, I am leaving flat, sticking out. So that way, when you overlap them, so say this is your cuff here, when they're overlapped, you have a really nice edge, okay? So that's what we want. Now the next thing I want to tackle here is the uh, sleeve seam, okay? Now since we did such a pretty seam, pretty encased seam for the bodice with that uh, machine felling, I'm going to be doing a French seam for the sleeve. And so I'm just going to go ahead and match up the top, match up the notch, match up the bottom, but pay particular attention to making sure your edge is totally lined up because I want to come back and do a quarter inch seam all the way down the edge here. Okay, so I've done a nice straight quarter inch seam and I am going to press it just to set those stitches in, stitches in nicely. Then I'm gonna open it up just a little bit here. Try to make sure everything's good underneath and press this seam allowance, both sides of it towards one side. It doesn't really matter which side, just press it towards one side. Okay. sure it's pressed way down at the stitching line. All right, and now I am going to turn it, well, I would say inside out, okay? So before you were right side out, now you are inside out. And this is the seam that we just sewed, all right? And I'm gonna fold it in half and since we press the seam allowances to one side, it's a lot easier to go ahead and press this flat, okay, so that my stitching is at the very edge here. Now, if when you sewed your quarter inch seam, if you got a little wide or you got a little wonky, trim it before you get to this part and you'll be just fine. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is come back and pin it. Now, I, need, I've, I have a 5 8 inch seam allowance on the pattern, okay? I've used a quarter of that up with the first round. So now I'm gonna come back and I'm going to stitch just outside of where I can feel where that edge is on the inside here. All right, so inside here is the raw edges. So it's gonna be about 3 8 of an inch, you know, just coming straight down here, another seam. Okay, so I just made that other seam here. I'm gonna reach in and pull it right side out one more time here. So here's my seam. I don't have any threads or edges poking out 
find your back. Your back has more notches than the front. Your back also has all of this stuff going on, okay? What I'm gonna be doing is pressing, kind of opening it this way, and pressing this French seam seam allowance towards the back side. Okay, so now you can kind of see from the impression that it, my seam allowance is going that way because when I sew, that's how I want it to lay towards the back. But it gives a very nice finished seam on the inside. So there you go. Good morning. So um, I had to stop filming last night because I was making stupid mistakes. The power button on my microphone is the same as the mute button. And I kept hitting it when I was thinking I was turning on the power and I was actually muting myself and it got very frustrating because I'd have to redo things over and over. And I finally decided I'm just too tired to deal with this right now. So gone away, next day, feeling better and we're ready to get started and actually I'm going to be skipping to the cuffs because I want to put the cuffs on these sleeves. Before I put the sleeves on the top, I think that that's going to be a whole lot easier. So here we go. Okay, so I have four cuff pieces cut. I'm going to put two aside for right now. They're exactly the same on both sides. They're just rectangles. Two of them are going to get interfacing on them. And at first I was going to use more of a medium weight interfacing because that's more crisp for collars and cuffs and things like that. But I decided, you know, the whole feel of this whole shirt is softness and joy, okay? So with that, I am using a very lightweight interfacing instead, just so I can kind of crinkle up and roll up those cuffs easily instead of having, you know, crisp ones. I'm just going to, because it's so lightweight, I don't have to cut out the center. I can just fuse the entire piece on. So I just set it straight down. Yes, I am not using a press cloth. This is cotton and I have enough steam and I even though I'm working on a cotton I actually have my iron setting more of a wool setting um, just because I don't want it to go crazy melting the pellon okay I want it to melt the fusible dots underneath it but I don't want to melt the pellon I have just pressed you know not going back and forth just pressing with a lot of steam on my pellon side and now I flipped it over and I'm going to come back on the fabric side and just iron it again over on this side just to make sure everything has set from this direction also. Okay so this is my interface piece. I'm going to put my non-interface piece on top of it and just iron it flat this way. Firstly because this is ironed and this is not and being flannel they need to match but also that'll kind of meld it together. You know I'm not pinning it or anything anything right now just ironing it so I'm gonna mark these two circles which again marks both the 5 8 inch down this way and over this way all right so if I am making the fold where that seam is going to be I'm gonna fold it right here so let me just fold that and put a pin. The interfaced one I have on the back, this is the non-interfaced one up here on the front. So I'm gonna do that the same over here. At this dot, I'm gonna fold it. And I'm just gonna pin it there so that when I come and stitch it, and I'm gonna stitch you know, over the fold, down to this point, over and back up up here over this fold on each one and I'm stitching it at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. I'll show you one other little trick here. Sometimes when you're sewing down and you have to make that turn to come over, if you're not really um, good at gauging exactly how far down you need to go to get that 5 8 on this piece you can just make that same dot on the bottom and that's going to show you exactly where you need to make that turn. So as I'm sewing this way I know when I hit that dot that's where I turn and head this direction. So that just makes life easier sometimes if you're like me and you are still on your first cup of coffee and you just need a little extra help. So I have it sewed. The first thing I'm doing is taking a big sweeping corner off here to take the bulk out of my corners. And then I am going to 
grade this inner one here down to about a quarter inch or so. And I'll be leaving this one flat up here. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn these right side out. Punch out the corners with my favorite metal chopstick. And it really is my favorite metal chopstick. Um, it's got this very nice rounded tip, so it doesn't poke through things, but it's small enough that it can really reach in. I love it, and it's smooth, so it doesn't catch on anything, you know. All right, so I'm gonna need to go ahead and go over and press this nice and flat like that. I'll do the same thing to this one. So making sure that the side that needs to be folded under is still folded under. I'm gonna line up my edge over here and stick a pin. And if you can see, actually, I usually place my cuff just a smidge beyond. I mean, we're like less than a sixteenth of an inch beyond, but that way when I fold it, there is a lot of thickness right there. I can have enough room to pull it all in and even though it sticks out farther now, once I pull it over and it wraps around that thickness, it's gonna expand enough that it'll look flat. So, and then I'm gonna pin the opposite side over here. Same, just at the edge with the cuff just barely a hair wider. As I'm pinning, I'm making sure that my seam allowance is pointed towards the back. So I'm gonna pin that towards the back and work my way over here. I'm gonna pin the pleat that I have made from the pattern. So you can see here's that extra ease. You can kind of split the difference and work it in with your feed dogs and, oops, that's not very even, like that. And that would work very well. I'm just gonna ease it in. So I kind of figure out where the midpoint is put a pin here, and as I sew it, let me put one more pin. See how it's just gonna wanna work itself back in. We can do this. Uh, so as I sew it, I'm gonna have the sleeve part down, the cuff part up, so that when the feed dogs are working, this is the part they're gonna be working in. But while you're doing that, make sure that this seam allowance is still going in the same direction you want and that this pleat is still going in the same direction you want. Lots to look at in one little cuff. So I just decided it's still morning and I'm not in the mood for speed or headaches. So I am just gonna baste this together so I can pull out these pens and I can make sure that everything that has to be folded a certain way is going to stay folded a certain way. So I'm just gonna be basting it in, you know, within the seam allowance, probably a little more than a quarter inch in from the seam allowance, all the way across, and that way I can kind of work the ease in with my basting, one, and I can keep the pleats folded the way they want and everything lined up this way. It's just one less chance of having to pull stitches out again later. All right, so I have sewn down here, and I'm going to pull out my basting stitch now because I need to trim the seam allowance. So again, I am, this is the wrong side of the sleeve. This is the right side of the sleeve. So this is the public part of the sleeve. So the seam allowance that's closest to this part of the sleeve is the one that I'm gonna be leaving the longest on this shirt. And so that means that the one that I'm cutting is the actual sleeve part, not the cuff part. And that's better because also it's more bulky. It's got all these extra folds and things. So I'm gonna take the tops off of those bulky pieces and I'm gonna trim the whole thing down to about a quarter inch. So now I can tuck it in. Wrap my edge around it and pull that in. And I am going to, just like I've done for everything else, you know, I am going to whip stitch this down invisibly. Use my awl and poke this corner in. 
I want to make really, really sure that it's going to be very neat inside because I know that I'm going to be rolling these sleeves up as I wear them and so everything on the inside is going to be very visible. So that's one of the reasons for the French seams and also the reason that I'm trying to take my time and make sure that all of this is nice and neat and pretty much invisible so that when those sleeves get rolled up there's not going to be any troubles. So at this point I'm going to pull out my basting thread that was holding my little pleat together. So I'm just going to stick a needle in the middle here so I can bury that knot in between the two layers. Right there. And then just take a couple little stitches on the edge and that's going to keep this wanting to fold the right way. Stitches in this way to hold it securely and one sideways to lock it in and clip that. So now move this out of the way. It's going to want to keep that fold so when I have my button on here and my buttonhole on here, it's all going to be nice. But when I have it unbuttoned, that part's not going to want to pooch out, you know, because that's not pretty. Live in my new colored life, free of the city strife. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and so and spin, and move the horses spin to the barn. Then time to move them out again. Red barns we have to do for my houses. The few I see stay when I arrive. This life pleases me, as it is plain to see. I'm living. I 